Hello and welcome to Korea Overlander or Overland Plus depending on what channel you're watching and today we are going to check out doo -doo -doo, the list of 10 things to avoid or do when dealing with navigation. Stay tuned everybody because here we go. All right, everybody, thank you for sticking around for the video today. I'm very happy to have you with us. Wonderful to have you back for this. Uh, this one is uh, the second in a long list of top tens that we're going to be going through. It's going to take a long time, so buckle in, folks. And if you do happen to like the content that you've been watching so far, hit the bell and sub button would really appreciate it goal is to get to 500 by the end of the year anyway help us out please it'd be great all right here we go 10 things to do 10 things to do to avoid uh navigation issues and problems while you are out overlanding number one have multiple navigation tools at your disposal these include technical, like, tech gadgets as well as old school orienteering. That's right, map and compass, people. Let's get back to the basics, shall we? Um, <clears throat> so, doesn't really matter, um, you know, what type of tools you are using, uh, what type of pad you use, are you using a phone, uh, those sorts of things, doesn't matter. Um, but have that available to you, but also the uh, physical map and compass, okay? Number two, number two. Um, when you are using electronic devices, download the maps uh, as an offline source, whether you're using Google Maps or Gaia GPS or maps.me, uh, downloading those maps onto your devices, uh, especially when you are out in a no-sell zone uh, or a no-service zone, you want to have those available to you. That's just, that's a no-brainer. You know, you're gonna be out in areas where there's no cell service. You should know where you're going, so you'll know that there's no cell service. Having those maps, electronic maps, uh, as an offline source, mwah, Jeff's kiss, as they say. All right, number three, um, regularly update your electronic maps and your physical maps. Both of these, both of these. So obviously you're gonna want to, if you are doing uh, offline maps, right? You want to make sure that those offline maps are up to date as much as you can, but also your physical maps, your physical, like your physical maps, these ones right here, right? You want to make sure that these maps are current. Um, there's generally a copyright, uh, there's a, there's a, or a date of publication on these sorts of maps. Um, you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date map that you can use. So, you know, yeah, it's self-explanatory, right? But just make sure you're not using a map from like 15 years ago because the zones that you're going in uh, might have changed. Okay, so keep that in mind. Make sure you have some basic orienteering skills available to yourself and your team. Learn how to use one of these. Learn how to use one of these. They are super, super helpful. You never know when you're gonna have to go old school out in about. Again, it's old school stuff, but make sure you are aware and understand how those things work. Topographical maps. 
not your Rand McNally type roadmaps, which are really helpful to have in the car too. Don't, don't get me wrong, but when you're out topographical maps, they're the ones that are going to be, uh, they're the ones that are gonna be helpful when you are out overlanding. Number five, extra batteries, power sources, solar chargers, yeah, bring the stuff with you that you might need. Um, now, solar chargers are becoming more popular. So if you're stopping for, uh, you know, you're stopping for the day and you've got some nice sunlight out, then yeah, uh, get your batteries all charged up via the solar panels. So yes, excellent, solar panels. Number six, um, marking the waypoints and the key locations on both physical and digital maps. Let me explain. So when you are prepping and planning your trip, obviously you're looking at where the general area is you're going to go or maybe specifics. Mark those on all of your maps, all of your maps, regardless of, regardless of regardless of whether it's a, a paper map or a digital map, d doesn't matter, mark everything out. Uh, number seven, doop, number seven, uh, plan the routes in detail. We kind of just touched on this, but a little bit more detail here. Uh, plan the routes in detail, plus all of your detours and secondary, secondary roads, all right? So you're gonna have your primary road, your primary track, um, you might want to have a secondary, uh, a, a secondary road mapped out. So if there is something that happens between the time you plan and the time you go out, you have a backup and you know, uh, oh, I just have to switch from number one to number two and boop, now the, now it's going to take us to where we need to go. So have a multi, a multi route plan available again on both your digital and offline. Okay. Digital and offline. And also make sure you are plan. You have, make sure you have given your plan to someone who is not on the trip but familiar with what you're doing. This is just a level of safety and redundancy that you need to make sure you're doing. Number eight, in some areas, you might consider having a satellite phone with you. This is completely up to you whether you want to have that expense or not, but it could be something you might want to consider. Um, but the other thing is also a personal location beacon, PLBs, or a personal location device. Um, something like, for example, the Garmin InReach, which I've mentioned last week in the video, but those have their own, Garmin has their own satellite system. You can send a message out, you can receive information, uh, you can have an emergency button, and that sends a flash message to somebody who's not on your trip. You see how some of these are actually interconnected. Um, so having that, that sort of uh, device uh, may be helpful. The one thing about Garmin is you will pay initially for the device and then you'll pay like a monthly fee for the service itself. And I believe you can go month to month. I could be wrong, but I believe you can go month to month and you know, maybe you only need it for four months out of the year. Well, you pay for those four months, you cancel the service, and next year you just start the whole thing over again. So keep that in mind. It is something to uh, to be aware of. All right, number nine. Number nine. Um, make sure you are familiar with everything that you are using related to GPS. Whether it is the offline stuff here, whether it is your tablets, your phones, a dedicated uh, GPS screen, whatever it is you're using, make sure you understand how to use them. Um, the other thing that I would recommend in this category is make sure more than one person understands and is knowledgeable on the technology or the old school stuff that you uh, that you are using in your team, all right? If, if 
let's say, hypothetically, I'm out and I'm the only one that knows how to use a Garmin inReach, uh, and I fall and I fall to and succumb to some issue and I'm not able to provide assistance, someone else can pick, pick that up and work the tool appropriately uh, and have that, uh, have that issue covered, okay? So have multiple hands, multiple eyes on the training aspect of all of these things. Number 10, here we are, number 10, at the end already. Uh, staying informed, climate, the terrain, potential hazards, all of these things can be gleaned from, uh, from, uh, from uh, internet forums. You know, you go jump on the interwebs and, and look up forums uh, that give you information about the area that you're in. That can be very handy. Pay attention, however, to the date posted. You don't want to be reading something that's two years old because that could skew the way that you are actually planning out your trip. Get in touch with the local population once you arrive in the general vicinity of your overlanding off-road. So you pop into a diner, let's say, or a restaurant, and you're just going to have something before you get out on into the road. Maybe just say, hey, you know, this is my name is blah, 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 and I'm we're, our team is going to go out. You happen to do you know any do you know anything? Has anything changed uh, that we should be aware of? The other thing you might want to consider is to go to your local constabulatory, your local sheriff's department, local police. Just introduce yourself. Hey, I'm. my name is Ben. Uh, our team is headed out this way. Is there anything that we should be aware of before we leave? Is there anything that you know that we don't? Those are my 10. That's it. Those are the 10 things that you can do to ensure uh, a, a, a safer and more uh, prepared uh, navigational experience on your overland journey. Be well, be safe, have a great time. I'll catch you later on the next one. Peace.